My name is Gautam Kamath, and I'm going to tell you about our work on differentially private fine-tuning of language models, joint work with an amazing crew of collaborators who you can see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, they are affiliated in various capacities with Microsoft and University of Washington. The recent finding has been that machine learning models are vulnerable to privacy attacks. And today's talk, we're going to focus on the example of large language models. In particular, these are trained on very large data sets. And it turns out that it's been shown that these can be coerced to sometimes reproduce training data verbatim. Here is a figure from a work of Carlini et al., which focuses on GPT-2. And in particular, if you prompt it with certain prefix strings, then it can spit out some of the text which it has memorized from its training data. Now, this is, of course, a problem if the training data is sensitive in some way, for example, containing personal information, copyrighted text, and so on, and thus would constitute a privacy violation. This is something we'd like to avoid, of course. A common solution to this is known as differential privacy, which I'm not going to get into the full definition today, but it's a rigorous approach to data privacy frequently used and protects against individual data points being memorized uh, to be a bit reductive, but more than that. And it can serve, one, one good thing about differential privacy, it's very malleable. Um, there is a differentially private algorithm which serves as a drop in replacement for SGD, for training machine learning models. And here it is, it's called DPSGD. It's pretty much the same as SGD, except there's an addition of a step where we clip the gradients and then add Gaussian noise to their average. It turns out that this perturbation can hide the contribution of individual data points. That can be used to train a model privately. But differential privacy is not always perfect for machine learning solutions. Sometimes it can work, but there's issues sometimes. And one big problem is accuracy. So one, uh, let me use the example of CIFAR-10. CIFAR-10 is a common image classification data set where we know we can get 99% accuracy non-privately. However, the state-of-the-art accuracy results are from Tremere and Bonnet right now, and they show you can get differentially private uh, classification in the setting with accuracy 69%, which is a significant drop in accuracy, often too big to handle, uh, to put up with if we need accuracy. Another problem is that it can be slower in terms of uh, training time and also requires much higher memory usage. This plot shows uh, the maximum batch size uh, in some settings before the, uh, running out of memory. And you can see that with privacy, the number down here, uh, you can handle much smaller batch sizes than compared to uh, without privacy. So this makes it more expensive to run uh, these things privately, to train these things privately, rather. So let's put that to the side, the downsides of differential privacy, and let's talk a bit about large language models and the recent developments. Recently, there's seen, been a lot of success in seeing uh, in using transformer-based large language models. This is a picture of a transformer from Vaswani et al., which uh, introduced uh, transformer uh, architectures. And in particular, you might have heard of some things like BERT and GPT. These are typically trained and used in a two-step procedure. First of all, there's a pre-training step, which is trained on, they're trained on a large diverse data set, uh, which may consist of, say, data scraped from the internet. And then the second step is that the weights of the model are then fine-tuned on a sparser, smaller, task-specific data set. Uh, and it turns out that even though these come pre-trained on something which may be totally unrelated to your specific task, just by doing a task-specific uh, fine-tuning, then you can save, uh, you, can, you can do really, really well in a variety of settings. So this has fueled a lot of success in uh, NLP over the last couple of years. Now, let's bring it back to DP. I claim that this type of framework is great for DP because uh, this, this fits in perfectly. The first step, like I mentioned, is often scraped from the internet and therefore can be considered to be a public data set. This is uh, the sensitivity concerns are not uh, quite there. So you can just consider pre-training on a large public training data set. And then you do fine tuning on a sparser task specific private data set. For example, say if uh, you have a medical data set, which you want to fine tune on. So you can see the kind of split here into a public data set and a private data set. And we use them both for different purposes. This is part of a broader agenda of employing public data for private data analysis. Now, there's some hiccups. It's not just uh, that, in the sense that large language models are large, which creates a problem in many ways involving the fact that they involve billions or even trillions of parameters. First of all, this introduces, even in the non-private setting, significant memory overheads in order to train and store them. 
Uh, and this is inconvenient for settings uh, like federated learning, where we have some sort of personalization. If you want to personalize for many different uh, applications, then maybe you'd have to store many different copies of the model. That's not good and not very portable. Things get even worse with DP. In particular, like I mentioned before, there's overheads due to running time and memory usage. And another common trend seems to be larger models incur more noise when, uh, when you have to introduce more noise when training privately, and thus you get worse accuracy for larger models in many cases. One way to solve this type of problem is using parameter-efficient fine-tuning methods, which have recently been introduced in the non-private literature. The most popular one uh, and well-known one is adapters, which were introduced by Hulsby et al. And here's a figure from their paper. Roughly speaking, rather than fine-tuning on all the parameters of the model, what you instead do is introduce new components, new layers in the model, known as adapters, which have far fewer parameters than the overall model. And then you can just fine-tune those specific parameters rather than uh, all of the parameters of the model. There's other approaches known as compactor, LoRa, prefix tuning, prompt tuning, and more. But the bottom line is that any of these methods, they manage to achieve comparable performance to fine tuning all of the parameters non-privately with fewer than 1% of the parameters, which as we discussed before, can have a number of benefits. Now, this leads us to the following framework. To basically, employing these types of uh, parameter-efficient fine tuning methods in the private setting. So here we have a three-step procedure. The first step is which, in which you pre-train the model. This involves a large public data set, which is visible to the adversary. Like I said, this can be uh, a public data set scraped from the internet. The second step is the private tuning step, in which we use a small private data set. And then we fine-tune the model, introducing new parameters, uh, which are introducing new parameters to the model, similar to the adapter example I mentioned in the previous slide. In particular, everything here is done privately, and therefore this is not visible to the adversary. And the final step is basically to deploy it. What you can do is take these parameters which you fine-tuned, and then they're basically plug in to the original large language model. Note that you can swap in different sets of privately trained parameters for different tasks, uh, which improve the portability for settings such as federated learning. So now I'm going to tell you about some of our findings and uh, how, how this does. The first finding is the, the big one that essentially you can train these privately while approaching the non-private accuracy. Here are some results on glue tasks uh, with and without privacy. You can see the first result is full fine tuning without privacy and then the remaining ones are with privacy. This is on Roberta Large with epsilon equals 6.7. And you can see that in the best case, uh, with LoRa, that we get an average drop of only 3.1% uh, from non-private to private, which is fairly small. And it tunes less than 1% of the total number of parameters, so it's very parameter efficient. I'll mention that there's interesting concurrent work by Lee Tremere, Liang, and Hashimoto, which shows comparable accuracy while privately fine-tuning all parameters, so check that out as well. The second finding, which I think is very interesting and a bit surprising, is that scaling up helps. So larger models give a number of benefits, it turns out which include, first of all, better accuracy, both non-privately and privately. So here is GPT-2, medium, large, and XL. Uh, and we're computing the blue score uh, on, in both a private setting and a non-private setting. You can see that, uh, that we know already that a larger model will give better accuracy non-privately. But we find that the same finding happens as well for the private setting as well. The second thing is that there's actually a smaller utility drop due to privacy. If you look at the delta between uh, non-private and DP tuning, you'll see that uh, it starts at 5.1%, but as we go larger, then it only is a 4.3% drop. So essentially, larger models help, which is, was counter at least to my intuition, where in, the non in, in smaller settings, we often find that larger models result in worse accuracy, but here it's better. So the same finding from uh, the uh, from the non-private setting carries over here as well. And the final finding is that uh, these, these methods, which are parameter efficient, can be faster and save on memory. We can see here that full fine tuning with DPSGD takes a lot of memory and uh, time per epoch, but you can see that DP fine tuning with, say, the LoRa approach takes much less memory as well as being much faster at the same time. So in conclusion, we found that large language models can be privatized, and in fact, larger models 
seem to give better accuracy privately. Uh, and we can also do all of this parameter efficiently. And like I mentioned, this is a more part of a more broad agenda, which I hope uh, we'll see more exploration in the following years in which pri public data can help overcome the drawbacks of private learning. Thank you for listening.